Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about integration by partial fractions, part two. In my previous video, I talked about finding integrals of rational functions when you could factor the denominator into linear, non-repeated factors. So each of these is a unique factor and each of them is a linear factor. In this video, we're also going to do linear factors, but we're going to do repeated linear factors. So in this case, the factor of x plus 3 is squared, so it's repeated. So let's get right into it. Our example is the integral of dx over x times x plus 3 squared. And I just want you to notice that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. My next example, I'll do the opposite. Before we even worry about integration, we're going to just take this fraction and break it down into its partial fractions. So we have a numerator of 1 over x times x plus 3 squared. So we're going to start off. Our first fraction will have a denominator of x. We don't know the numerator. We'll call it a. The next fraction We'll have a denominator of x plus 3, and we don't know the numerator, we'll call it b. And then we need to include the possibility of a third fraction, which is x plus 3 squared. We don't know the numerator, so we'll call that c. What we want to do is find the value of a, b, and c. And once we know that, then we have a simpler um, integral to integrate than this. So we're going to proceed like we did in the previous video. Our first step is to multiply both sides of this equation by our lowest common denominator of x times x plus 3 squared. So when I multiply the left hand of the equation by this lowest common denominator, everything will cancel and I'm just left with a 1. The x cancels, the x plus 3 squared cancels. Then when I multiply the right hand side of the equation by this, remember that you have to multiply that to each term. So to start off with, when I multiply a over x times this, the x will cancel, and I'll be left with a times x plus 3 squared. Then when I multiply this term by this factor, or this lowest common denominator, the x plus 3 factor cancels, and I'm left with another x plus 3 as well as an x. Then the last fraction, when I multiply by this, the x plus 3 squared cancels, so I'm left with c times x. Again, there's different ways that we can find the value of a, b, and c. I'm going to do what I think might be the easiest for you, and we're going to choose, we're going to start by choosing values of x that make these factors equal to 0. So we can start with x equals 0, plug that into this equation, and we'll get 1 equals when x is 0, we'll have a times 3 squared, plus when x is 0, this whole term will be 0, and this whole term will be 0. So those are gone. We've been able to isolate and solve for a. a will equal 1 ninth. The next number we're going to choose for x is negative 3, because that will make that 0 and that 0. So we plug that in. And we get c equal to negative 1 third. There's nothing now that we can choose that will eliminate or a and c making those 0 without making this 0. So what we're going to do is just randomly select another value of x. We've chosen 0, we've chosen negative 3. I'm going to just choose x equals 1. You can choose any value. We're going to plug that in. So 1 plus 3 is 4 times 1 times 1 plus 3 is 4 plus c times 1. Now, I do know the values for a and c. Remember, a was 1 ninth. 
and C was negative one third. So we will have 16 times A, which is one ninth. So that will be 16 ninths plus four B plus C, which is negative one third. So 16 ninths minus one third, which is three ninths, will give me 13 ninths plus four B. Subtract 13 ninths from both sides and we'll get negative four ninths. So that's four B. Divide both sides by four and we get B equals negative one ninth. Now I have these partial fractions. Now I can integrate. Okay, I now have this uh, integral, which is an integral of a rational function with repeated linear factors, broken down into the sum of three simpler fractions. And my next step is to pull these coefficients out front to make it look a little simpler. And now let's integrate. Integral of one over x dx is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Integral of one over x plus three dx is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus three. To integrate this function, let's do a bit of a review of the general power rule. If you have the integral of u to the n du, you can integrate that, it will be u to the n plus one divided by n plus one. So what I'm going to do is write this as a power x plus three to the negative two. I have the du factor, the du factor is simply dx, so I can integrate that function using this rule. So my integral will be x plus three to the n plus one, which would be negative one, divided by n plus one plus c. Now let's clean this up a little bit. I can combine these two terms. Let's factor out a one ninth. So I'll have the natural log of the absolute value of x minus the natural log of the absolute value of x plus three. Negative one third divided by negative one becomes positive one third. And I can write that as one over x plus three to the power of one. And I'm gonna go one further step in simplifying this. I can combine these two terms using my properties of logs. So that will be the natural log of x over x plus three. Don't forget absolute value signs because we need to make sure that that value is going to be positive. And I'm going to write this as one over three times x plus three. So there is the integral of this function that we weren't able to do until we broke it down into its partial fractions. Let's do one more example. In this next example, I want you to notice that the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. So what we need to do first before we worry about factoring the denominator and then doing partial fractions is we want to do division, algebraic division, and break it up into different terms that are easier to integrate and then see what we're left with. So we're going to do the in, uh, division. Now we go in descending order and we want to have every power of x. We don't have an x cubed term, so I'm just going to put it in with a zero coefficient. So x cubed goes into x to the fourth power x times. Now we multiply x to each term in our divisor. So that will be x to the fourth minus x cubed minus x squared plus x. We subtract, that's zero, 
that's going to be 1x cubed, that's going to be negative x squared, and that's going to be 3x. Bring down the plus 1. Now x cubed goes into x, positive 1 times, 1 times this whole thing will be x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 1. We subtract, that's 0, that's 0, that's going to be 4x, and that's 0. So that's our remainder. Therefore, we can write this as, instead of this fraction, we can write it as x plus 1 plus then the remainder over our divisor and we know how to integrate this term and this term but now we have a rational function this is factorable we're going to factor this and so we're going to have a rational function that we can break down into its partial fractions and then integrate those in order to factor this, I have four terms, so I'm going to do factoring by grouping. So I'm going to factor out an x squared out of those two terms, and I'm going to be left with x minus 1. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of these two terms, because I'm looking to get an x minus 1 factor. So if I factor out a negative 1, that will give me x minus 1. Factor out an x minus 1 out of each of these. Now this is a difference of squares which is factorable and the factors are x plus 1 times x minus 1. So you can see this is repeated. So we're going to have x minus 1 squared times x plus 1. So this denominator is factorable and here are the factors. And notice we have a repeated one. So we just are going to concentrate on this term breaking this down into its partial fractions. So this fraction with the denominator factor is this. So let's break it down. Our first fraction will have a denominator of x minus 1. We don't know the numerator. The next fraction will have a denominator of x minus 1 squared. We'll let the numerator be a b. And our last fraction will be x plus 1 in the denominator. And our numerator is unknown, so we'll call it c. Again, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by this whole denominator, the lowest common denominator in the equation. When I multiply this side by it, everything cancels, I'm left with 4x. When I multiply this term by it, one of the x minus 1 factors cancels, and I'm left with an x minus 1 and an x plus 1. When I multiply this term by this, the x minus 1 squared cancels, so I'm left with x plus 1. And when I multiply this term by this denominator, the x plus 1 cancels, and I'm left with c times x minus 1 squared. So the two x values we will start with is 1 and negative 1. When we put a 1 in, this term will go to 0, this term will go to 0, so we'll be able to find b. So 4 times 1 is 4. This is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 2 and this term would be 0. So 2b equals 4, so b will equal 2. The next th number that we'll choose for x is a negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 will be negative 4. When we put a negative 1 in, this factor becomes 0. This factor becomes 0. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. When we square that, it will be a positive 4. So we have negative 4 equals 4c. So c will equal negative 1. In order to find a, we have to choose a different value than x because we keep losing a every time we pick these values. So I'm going to choose 0. It's a nice easy number to work with. So we're going to let x equal 0, simplify it, and then we'll put our values of b and c in and solve for a. 
So when x is 0, 4x would be 0. a would be times negative 1 times 1. b will be times 1 when I put a 0 in. And c will be times negative 1 squared. So I get negative a plus b plus c. Let's plug these values in for b and c. So b is 2, c is negative 1. And we get 0 equals negative a plus 1. So if we move a to the other side, we get a equals 1. So now we've broken this rational function into its partial fractions. Now we can integrate. So this integral, which we found through algebraic division, was equal to this. And then we were able to break this up into its partial fractions. So we're finding the integral of x plus 1 plus the sum of those three fractions. Now let's integrate. Integral of x dx is 1 half x squared. The integral of 1 dx is x. This fits our basic log pattern of integration. So the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx will be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1. Let's pull this coefficient of 2 out in front. And then let's write this as a power, x minus 1 to the negative 2. And then we can see we use our general power pattern. So the integral of that will be plus 2 times the integral of x minus 1 to the negative 2 will be x minus 1 to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. And our final term follows our basic log pattern again. The integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx will be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1. Now I'm going to clean this up. I can combine these two log terms into one log term. So because it's subtraction, I'm going to write that as division. So it'll be the natural log of x minus 1 over x plus 1. And don't forget the absolute value signs. And this becomes minus 2 times x minus 1 to the negative 1, which is like over x minus 1. And that is our final answer. So lots of work involved. We had to do our division, then we had to do our partial fractions, and then we could integrate. In my next video, I'm going to talk about when we have quadratic factors in our denominator. So remember, these were all linear factors. Degree of 1, we'll look at quadratic factors, both repeated and non-repeated. See you then.